Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Is there anything all right? Oscar's like bringing in a 737 into the hangar. He has a weird relationship with Pony. Pony brought him a cappuccino today, and Oscar says, is there sugar in this, or do you hate me? And I think the answer was yes to both things. Yeah. All right, so he didn't put sugar, or he did put He didn't put enough sugar in. And so Oscar, he had to redo. Is that what his hand gestures, his maniacal Well, I think the last hand were. gesture had to do with paper a, towel. I need, a, I need a tissue or a paper towel to blow my nose for the I show. I see started. I'm at a disadvantage. I don't see anything that's happening yeah. in front of you You don't guys. want it. Like, it. It would piss you Mike, off. It's an advantage. It would actually piss you off. Just like I could fake anything that I'm looking when I'm looking out my window here. Right. <laughs> yeah. What? We, we see that we see me. that we see that once in a while. We're like, yeah, oh, the, yeah. the FedEx person stopped by, or your kids mm-hmm. are home. So, but you should invent a better story. Like, hey, look, it's George Clooney. Hi, George. Hey, George. <laughs> hey. Hello. No, no, Hello. No, no, no. Let me do it the right way. Hey, George Clooney's on my front porch. Not now. <laughs> Not now. Showtime. Uh, now. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. As uh, we are winding down for our tenth anniversary, as we're getting ready to make our plans to travel out to. Uh, beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm, very, yes. very exciting. And uh, you know what we didn't do yesterday? We didn't do what I have on my hot little hand here. We didn't get to the mailbag. If I don't do it today, right. I'm going to forget it. And uh, there's lots of uh, communicating with our it. listening audience. So get right to it. Not about it's us, about all you. All about, about you. that thing. Let me hit that. Excuse me. Bitch. Me. Mills Brothers. No, I believe it's a band called the Flamingos or the Cardinals. It's a it's a doo-wop band from 1950s. Are there other songs about? Uh, how about Hey Mr. Poe? Can we get some new music for yeah. the mailbag? Yeah, yeah, spice we, us up. I, I believe occasionally change things on the show. Yeah. You know, so I think that it would be wonderful to have something. What are bit. songs that have mail in them? U.S. Mail, of course. Hey Mr. Postman. Please, Mr. Postman, oh, by that several might be people. Nice. Yeah. Right, uh, Mike. Before uh, you start, I have a last-minute addendum I'd like to break in with that involves right. a gift. Oh, okay. uh, well, we have some clarifications. No, no. Oh, okay, what do we got? It's, just, it's a handwritten letter. By the way, letter. thank you again to yeah. the uh, to the uh, fan club. Oh, oh, yeah. And the people like Jolene White and company that uh, were very generous with Carla. Carla reached Rob yesterday, and Rob said it'll. Uh, as soon as I saw Rob with the check in his hand, uh, he said to Carla that uh, it's on its way. It'll be there in six days. Oh. Doesn't she have Venmo? She does not have Venmo. She preferred a hard check. Uh, hard, look at maybe she's look, she's a classic gal. Yeah, yeah, classic she's gal. Cla- that's extremely generous, and that's going to go yeah. right towards the goo that she puts on people's faces. Lots of goo, Mike. This reads: Hi guys, on yes. episode twenty three twenty nine, at about the twenty minute mark, you are all discussing the Nationals then in their playoff run. Ooh. Oscar on the bandwagon exclaimed, "I don't know names, but I know winners." Rob said, "That's good. Put it on a T-shirt." So here you go, Oscar. Oh, I love this. Oh, now, yes. Gift corner. Can we see? Yes, hold it up. It's a beautiful black or, t-shirt. I'm insulted. But and it know. reads, I don't know names, but I know winners. <laughs> That's a funny Thank t-shirt. You. Sign. That you could get away with wearing. I love that would be it. See you all funny. in Las Vegas. I love it. Dirk Vastrick. Oh, that's... T- how dare you, sir? Do we have two listeners that just do stuff for us? Is that what it is? I believe it is. That's yeah. truly amazing. It's yeah. truly spectacular. We have two people that constantly. Dirk, you're too generous. The tip of it's the sphere. Right. It's amazing. Yes. yes. It's truly, truly amazing. I'm I'm thrilled. I'm truly, truly thrilled. Well, That's uh, just amazing. Oscar is uh, he knows winners and Dirk is a winner. He, I'll he, take he, it. Absolutely. He know, and he knows Dirk's name. The we all know. Dirk. Of course. Everybody, everybody knows. Goddamn goddamn generous. He's incredible. Dirk. Way to go, Dirk. Good egg. Uh, Thank you, man. Any anything else or can we dive right in? Let's dive right in. Dear Mike, Rob, and Oscar, I know my husband would love to hear the traditional happy birthday greeting to start his 38th year of life, especially since I can't do anything special for him because he'll be sitting on a tugboat in Long Beach, California on his birthday. Fun. Oh, Uh, I am certain that a shout out from his absolute favorite podcast would be uh, something that would brighten his day. Thank you guys for being constant entertainment for him, whether he's working on his beloved Jeep Rosemary. Yes, she has a name. Oh dear, Rosemary. Rosemary I the love, Jeep. I love, I love naming cars. Have you ever uh, named a car? I name cars constantly. Lovely was the Subaru. 
And uh, Rocket is the uh, is the. I challenge. don't think we ever heard the Subaru's I, name. I don't know. We've heard Rocket either. Yeah, uh, and you know, and like Rocket to, Mortgage. There were guys up at uh, uh, when I lived in Virginia that uh, they both bought a an old beater that they shared a beater pickup truck, and they called it the bitch. That's a you know that's a that's a what is yeah, it? Yeah, it's just innocent fun. That's a cars and coffee name. Hey, yeah, who's uh, that? The bitch. Well, he says uh, his beloved Jeep Rosemary. She has a name, and she's an expensive mistress. Uh, or doing one of my numerous household projects just to put a smile on my face. Uh, you guys are great. Thanks, Jamie Scott. Postscript. I know I'm going to get ripped for this, but he is called, <laughs> but he is called Ed Scott. Oh, so she didn't put his name. No, in, in the there. original email, she neglected to mention. But he would name. have remembered because of the uh, Jeep called Rosemary. Yeah, the, the Jeep uh, called Rosemary. All right, Jamie, and Jamie's again. It's a very confusing letter to start. It, but the Ed, name is Ed Scott. We Ed clarify. Scott, yeah. Yes. It's Ed a DJ Scott. Name. So Jamie, it's a girl Jamie, or is it? It's a, a Jamie is a girl. That's the wife. And then Rosemary. Are we 100% sure? Yes, I saw they, a picture. Uh, be in the life? Okay. I, I saw a picture uh, of, the, uh, of the Jeep. Yeah. Some, well, they sent a picture of the Jeep. That's nice. Family shot of the Jeep. Picks. I didn't mm. know you got pics. Sure. Sarah Beck writes, if Mike is still interested in seeing Ringo Starr, uh, I'm ahead of you. I'm ahead of you. Uh, Seriously? Person. Yeah, I'm way ahead of this person. Yeah, I've already inquired about when they're going to uh, be, I think, the 12th, uh, which is uh, coming up, what, next week, that they uh, they actually go on sale for Bangor, Maine. Yeah, yeah. that's so uh, cool. I got a million knows. people, yeah. Sarah Beck writes, if uh, Mike is still interested in seeing Ringo Starr, he just announced his 2020 tour dates, uh, and he is in Bangor, Maine on uh, June 9th, and uh, I think it's June 9th. It's a uh, Tuesday. Uh, his big chance to spend a night with the Beatles. Thoughts? Um, I I told Carlo, would you like to go? And we're already planning on it. Oh, that's we're, awesome! We're going up to the Cross, and it's not in your letter. The Cross Insurance Center. Look at you, where he will be performing because Rob sold the uh, the concert so well. It, it was. It, it's I looked. Exciting. I think the band is largely the same, so you're going to get a lot of the great same hit records. But he's changed it up a Bangor. little bit. And on Buddy some Rich, of the last time, last place I saw Buddy Rich was. Bangor, Maine. Really? Wow. Yes, it was. And you have yeah. to inquire. I know on some dates, Edgar Winter is opening for him. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Really? Yes. That would be a great yeah, night. That, uh, so I'm going to, uh, but but here it is. Uh, I, I'm, that's what I was, you know what? That's the thing. What? That's the thing I was going to tell you about. Remember when I couldn't remember oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. before the show? Uh -huh. That's what I was going to tell you about. Thank that God. This, uh, this came to my attention, and uh, I wanted to pick your brain because it's one of those deals where... They don't go on sale until this date, and I didn't know whether you have any strategies. We'll talk after the show. Oh, you that. mean like uh, on, on a certain Like getting date. tickets. Oh, I have, like, a, like I have how, that issue right like now. How you, like how you strategize. Uh, Alanis you know? Morissette is uh, performing Jagged Little Pill, the entire album Oh, my straight. God, really? Yeah, in New York City at the Apollo Theater. I see that pop up in my Everyone feed. loves the Apollo Theater. Uh, Apollo Theater. I'm sorry, oh, okay. Apollo. Right. Um, and I said... The other one's owned by Burt Young. Do I have enough in me to go to New York to see a oh. concert? Like, right? do, uh, do, am I? That's an amazing show, though. That Are would be you an that much show. of an Alanis fan? Oh yeah, like that was. You ought to know. When that album came, that was one of the last great <laughs> pop albums. Well, I was not. I was not even pop. It was alt rock when it first came. Yeah, out. Yeah, but but it crossed over to pop. Yes, it's a, it's thing. a crossover. It, yeah, it was wonderful. You hop aboard the train, so, so what get I, on it and drive to New York City. What I didn't do. <laughs> I did. That was pretty good, Mike. What I Thank didn't you. know uh, was that there's a Broadway show coming out, and in honor of that, her concert is going to perform the entire album. Is the Broadway show like a jukebox musical of Alanis Records? I'm a Broadway guy. I haven't gotten that far. I just saw it last night, and I said, well, maybe I'll go to New York. It would be it's nice to see It's the story, this. a Broadway musical about a man that dumps a woman, and she gets pissed off and writes songs about him. And then a young girl named Taylor comes up, and she writes all her songs about guys she breaks up with. Do you know who, you. allegedly, the guy that pissed Alanis <laughs> Morissette off was? Yeah, it was uh, John Mayer. No. No, 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 no. I always <laughs> guess it's John Mayer. <laughs> but that's a good guess. It's valid. Dave Coulier. Yes. Oh, that's right from, uh, from, uh, that's from, right. from Fuller from Full House. Exactly. And yeah. a wonderful stand-up comic. Absolutely. Uh, moving right along. Enough of that. <laughs> hey, fellas. <laughs> Painful. Jeez. Uh, I wanted to thank you for your kind words regarding teachers and how much they should be appreciated and respected. Well, I, I met it. Uh, my wife is a fourth grade teacher. Uh, by the way, uh, Mama took Michael, I uh, went to school today to have the parent teacher conference while I was getting ready to do this. So show. he's better? So they do it before school, and uh, he's, he uh, went to the bus today Good. with his bus driver. Mr. Sleeps a lot. Count um, sleeps Jesus a lot. Christ. <laughs> uh, he's uh, seven, eight minutes late. 
which is good. That's that's what for I'm him. That's early. Every day. Yeah, I'm 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 that close. I'm that close with this dude. I swear to God, there's Sla- gonna be one day tires? where he see. No, there's just oh. one day where I'm gonna tell him. You know, come on, yeah. do your job. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my wife is a fourth grade teacher, and I can tell you that uh, being beaten down and overworked at every turn is driving people out of the profession. Uh, hmm. Teachers aren't simply teachers anymore. They are counselors, mentors, police officers, aunts, sisters, uncles, and brothers. And in some cases, parents to kids who just don't have the love and support that most of us were fortunate enough to experience. We uh, trust teachers to take care of our kids for up to eight hours every day. And the appreciation you spoke of on the air in a quick minute had more love than uh, most of us here all year long. Thank you for your words of encouragement and for your acknowledgement that they are, above all, doing the absolute very best that they can with whatever they have. Cheers, fellas. Keep bringing the funny and DGH Scott Mason. Scott, that's uh, appreciated, nice letter. but yep. no need for it because it's the way I feel. And these people hey, that hey, are, it's the that way are we so feel. Efficient. We feel. Well, I was the one that was, I think, specifically speaking about. I'm talking about the uh, royal teachers. we. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. Well, we, I I disagree. No, the royal we would be me saying we. I disagree. Uh, I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? I, mean, I, I love teachers too. I think that they, I, I'm, they're good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad, yeah. Ed. Not me. Right, you you want saying. an army cot? All right. Uh, what's that? <laughs> no. What, what were you saying? I don't what? like teachers. <laughs> yes, you do. Seems like you they help make a, teachers more than anybody seems else. Seems like they make a lot of money for not much work. Right. No, they, we <laughs> look. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course. <laughs> I, I love teachers and I loved bus drivers. Loved. Like, you loved. like school, loved. school bus drivers. I don't want to piss Paul off. Loved. School bus drivers. This guy's wearing my ass out. He's chapping wearing me your out. ass. Yeah, he's well, chafing I don't like, it. I don't like a, a window, that, a, a window oh. that should be five minutes. I hate it being 25 minutes. Yeah. I hate it. The half an hour I need in the morning. I need it. I Are you sure that today's eight minute ass. arrival wasn't actually yesterday's arrival, 24 hours and eight minutes I, late? You know, who knows? <laughs> All I know is like I sit there, stare at an app. To see when the uh, when the ignition gets turned on on the bus. What about and laying? I wait and I wait and I wait and I. What wait. about laying this on him? Say, look, if you were an astronaut in space, and you miss your reentry window, you'd be burnt up. <laughs> He'd probably go f you and just keep driving. <laughs> uh, next letter says Rob. Yes. Uh, who do you think is more important to you, the Three Stooges uh, or the Beatles? Or as this says, the Three Stooges of the Beatles. Oh, it does. Yeah. Discuss. Um, uh, that's uh, yeah. What's uh, from Jason? You know, all told, I think the three studios are very important. Was there four? Well, there was actually six. Six? Yeah. Oh, what about the six? There was uh, there was Curly Howard, Mo Howard, Larry Fine, Shemp Howard, Curly Joe Dorita, and Joe Besser. Nailed it. Beautiful Damn. work. Yeah. Yeah. And That's I do Jeopardy impressions question. of all of them. Mo, ah, why you? Come here. Right, get over here right there. Larry, ah, you got my hair, Mo. Yeah. Curly, yay. Hey, Mo, look. Mittens. No, 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 no. Shump, shemp. <laughs> my favorite. Not my favorite Joe, student. Curly my Joe Dorita. Impression. Cl- Cur- Curly Joe Dorita. <laughs> yeah, I don't really do him. And Joe Besser. Don't hurt me. <laughs> It's all the Stooges for you right there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they're so, very yeah. important, but I think uh, if you put the uh, quality stamp on it, the Beatles, if I had to choose to never have the Stooges or the Beatles again, I'd choose the Beatles. Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, That's obvious. Yeah. Right. I mean, well, the Beatles know, got I mean, messed up when they brought in Curly Joe Lennon. <laughs> Curly Joe Lennon. Curly Joe Oko. <laughs> Curly Joe Curly Joe. <laughs> uh, next letter says that was my Yoko impression. Yeah, that was good too. <laughs> uh, hello, boys. Hi. Love the nostalgia topic uh, this past week. Murder by Death. You got a lot of uh, really positive feedback. I like that movie. Oh, yeah. Murder that by that. Death is one of my favorite comedies of all time. My parents took me to the theater to see it when I was uh, when it was originally released. On the drive home, my father starts laughing for no apparent reason. I asked him why he was laughing, and all he said was, Two Two Twain. Uh, the mansion's address in the movie was Two Two Twain Street. Why is that? Because f- it's laughing like, your ass it's like Choo Choo Train, but with oh, a choo speech choo impediment. <laughs> Two Two Twain. Oh, no. Two Two Twain. <laughs> Okay. See, it's so it's These right there. People. These are his. Yeah. No, the fine I line. I understand. The fine it is line funny when you know it. Humor it. and hate. Uh, it took the old man two hours, but he finally got the joke. See, I'm be the old man. I'm the old man. I'd be driving goes two two twain. Every time you That's say it, funny. it gets funnier. <laughs> two two twain. <laughs> We're going to the Edward. Two two twain. Uh, also, when my wife and I first started dating. 
I built this movie up so much that when we first sat down to watch it, she couldn't make it past the first 20 <laughs> minutes. She called it boring and lowbrow. Oh. Bing! <laughs> well, I married her anyway. Uh, 15 years later, she still hasn't watched it. <laughs> I love that's such a man woman yep. thing. I gave up trying to get her to, so I think a divorce is just <laughs> around the corner. Keep bringing the funny fellas, Mike Lyon. Uh, that is, uh, or of course, if he uses the French pronunciation, Mike Lyon. 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 Yeah. Two two twenty. Do I hold in my hand the final letter here? Hi-o! My dearest fellas and Maddie, if you will, I will. Picture this. Ah. An elementary school classroom the day after Halloween. The children are all feral <laughs> after late bedtimes and too much candy. One particular child who can never keep all four chair legs in contact with the floor at once is rocking backwards enthusiastically. And precariously, with two chair legs high in the air, sensing the imminent cracked skull, the harried teacher shouts thunderously, Four on the floor! <laughs> <laughs> and realizes she has unintentionally delivered this command with the intonation of bore on the floor. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> this is totally appropriate for the six-year-old set, right? <laughs> I suffered complete silent mortification, and I totally blame you guys. Four on the floor. <laughs> that's a, that's a hard you guys. rule. That's it a is, hard it's rule. a hard rule. Hard yes. rule. That's our favorite teacher. Can't wait for the TMOS family reunion in Vegas. Humble servant, Linda, another great lady. Thank yeah. you. Uh, we will see you in Las Vegas. And now, I believe, Rob Spiewak, you can stop the show. Four on the floor. <laughs> it's the Michael O'Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael O'Mara Show at www.mikeomarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael O'Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. The details of my life are quite inconsequential. Oh, no, please, please. Let, let's hear about your childhood. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Come on. Very well. Where do I begin? My father was a relentlessly self-improving boulangerie owner from Belgium with low-grade narcolepsy and a penchant for buggery. My mother was a 15-year-old French prostitute named Chloe with webbed feet. My father would womanize, he would drink, he would make outrageous claims like he invented the question mark. Sometimes he would accuse chestnuts of being lazy, the sort of general malaise that only the genius possess and the insane lament. My childhood was typical. <laughs> Summers in Rangoon, luge lessons. In the spring, we'd make meat helmets. When I was insolent, I was placed in a burlap bag and beaten with reeds. Pretty standard, really. At the age of 12, I received my first scribe. At the age of 14, as a roastery named Vilma, ritualistically shaved my testicles. <laughs> there really is nothing like a shorn scrotum. It's breathtaking. I suggest you try it. You know, we have to stop. Dr. Evil has hijacked a nuclear warhead from Kreplakistan. Only two things scare me, and one is nuclear war. What's the other? Carnies. Circus folk. Nomads, you know. Smell like cabbage. Small hands. Oh, uh, Austin, I'd like you to meet somebody. This is my mother. <laughs> Austin! <gasps> That's not your mother, it's a man, baby! <laughs> Why won't <laughs> this wig <laughs> come off? <laughs> oh, Dear what? Austin, have you gone mad? No, I'm sorry, Basil, I thought she was a man. <laughs> Damn it, man, you're talking about my mother! Well, you have to admit, she is rather mannish. It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his easy chair, here's Mike. We are live from the Podcast Village Studios, now with two big locations for you in our nation's capital. We are the Mike O'Mara Show, TMOS to our friends, and very grateful to all of our listeners that support this show. From Short Pump, Virginia, to Galena, Illinois, Red Lion, Pennsylvania, Overland Park, Kansas, Frisco, Colorado. That just sounds like an old movie, doesn't it? A yeah, Western. like there'll be a shootout there. Frisco, Colorado, Kilkenny Island. I've been there. Wonderful place. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now and brought to you by Cornerstone. Uh, listen to some wisdom from Cornerstone. Predicting the future, uh, future ain't easy, but when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the housing market, 
Let me read that sentence that I read every day, and I haven't uh, gone back to you, and I know you don't check them either. Predicting the future ain't easy, but when it comes to the housing market, question mark. That's what it is written right there for our friends at Corner Stuff. Yeah. Predicting the future. Hey, when it comes to the yeah. ho- well, when it comes to the housing market? No, no way. Yeah, no. that's how it was written. That's how I intended it, but I'll change it. Predicting the future ain't easy, but when it comes to the housing market, what? Oh, when it comes to the housing market, it's about, uh, there are certain indicators that can help you figure out what you're insinuating- doing. No, no, no. That's a, it's fine if you add 400 words to the sentence. Well, what is wrote. what's the next sentence? Predicting though? the future oh. Ain't easy, but when it comes to the housing market, mm-hmm. and then what? There, the second paragraph yeah. says there are a few indicators that would be there are a few indicators and trends that can give you a fairly good idea of where things are headed. So I shouldn't have broken up into two sentences. They go together. I Perhaps. apologize. Yeah. Uh, right now, economists believe the housing market is a... I always thought it was me until just today. And then I looked at it and I... No, it ain't me. I, it's the way it's written. I always get confused and then I rewrite it in my brain. I've done that every day On for the our fly. friends at Cornerstone. Yeah. Let, well, me, uh, let me mention that Cornerstone can be reached at 202-625-1221. Or you can check the web at cornerstonefirst.com. Cornerstone First Financial. Personal attention from application to closing. Uh, they, they're talking about, at uh, our friends, and I will scrap this for now, okay. and tell you that Cornerstone is talking about a what is called a golden period where uh, unemployment is low and interest rates are low, and it is a perfect time to take advantage of that, which is for people that want to have the opportunity to get money at a great interest rate. These are the people that uh, have been used by our listeners, have been used mm-hmm. by Oscar. I saw that help Mark us yesterday. At Cornerstone, yeah. Mark Livingstone is our friend down there. Yes. They are in our building. They're the uh, they're the, they're the long term uh, local advertiser for the Mike O'Mara show, and uh, they they are very very good people. And they also will uh, if you mention that you're you know associated with TMOS with the Mike O'Mara show, they will help you guide you through uh, refinances, mor- mortgages, all the uh, all the stuff to borrow money. And they know what they're doing. Hundred percent. Uh, if people weren't uh, trying to get rich down here, I'd be calling them. As soon as I have an opportunity to, uh, you know, for for another bedroom, I I would take advantage of it. But it's uh, it's hard down here because the uh, uh, the folks don't sell them down here like they would. But when you see an opportunity, might be a good idea to get pre qualified and have your money ready to go and be fleet of yep. foot. Especially if you're definitely in the mood to uh, move or get into the housing market. So Cornerstone First Financial, check them out on our website. You can link to them, and they are very, very good people. I was, I've was i been reading that se- sentence for like uh, a month, so change it. Well, I shall. It's fascinating uh, that's that we, I mean, this is what, I think only a handful of people in this business can do. If you can change copy on the fly, right? like you're at your apex of A games. Like, Well, it's, it's something that... Uh, you know, it, the funny thing about when, when I, uh, Ron Burgundy, when you watch uh, Anchorman, is uh, we work with people that actually do that, where, where it's red as exactly it's written, as yeah. it is, yes. And, uh, and when you do that, it's hysterical. And sometimes uh, when you're reading on the fly, you'll see words that aren't there. You'll see punctuation well, marks you did, that just your brain tells you are there, and uh, that's that's the way. One it of goes, my favorite so. things you you would do, and you can still do it, of course, is that uh, you would do when you would do Regis, you would do the way Regis would read cue cards. Yeah, and he, and he and Regis's this thing. He was married to the copy, and he'd get all the words, but he'd stop at the wrong place. He'd stop at the wrong exactly. place. Like what? Like, yeah. uh, like how? Was, yeah. Oh, it's hard to remember, oh. but it would just be he would be. It would he would really phone in any kind of promo. And it was always when they well, did the trivia fun. question, uh, yeah. and it was not as on the Regis and Kelly show or Regis and Kathy Lee as much as it was on that Millionaire show. That he oh, had, okay, he okay, had to, I gotcha. He had to do a lot more reading on that. But show. a classic example is when they would do their they spin the wheel and they'd have to deal with the the, the Yenta caller and they'd right. ask some stupid trivia question and he'd say, "Well, then fine." Yeah, and you'd win a trip to uh, what the uh, the Daniel Boone Winery, and he'd have to read two <laughs> sentences about it, and he'd stop in all the wrong places. Daniel Boone Winery has bottles that. Uh, uh, yeah, you, <laughs> speaking of advertising, Oscar is always maybe not directly, but he's indicated to me, or somehow put in my brain that every commercial out there, every advertiser is a potential advertiser. Right. Yes. We never know who's going to advertise on our show. We never know. Big, small, in between, new. It doesn't matter. Sometimes we get surprised. Sometimes we're like, "Wow, yeah. that's great to be mm. associated." So. It's really whenever I see an advertiser 
that is pissing me off or, or, or bothering me in some way, I'm always hesitant. And this has been on my mind for a long, oh. long, 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 long time. And I'm finally just because I assume they're not going to. They would be a perfect advertiser yes. okay. for this show. Yeah. But I have to, I have to Ike, speak my heart. Let's set a blowtorch to, to it. Let's I do have, it. I have to speak my heart because I have watched these ads. And everybody sees these ads. They're all over the place. It's a company called Duluth Trading Company. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'm, and I'm here to say, hey, look, I, I don't know whether a woman created this ad campaign and you're trying to think that all men smell like feces and pick their crotches and all that. <laughs> but I am so, I'm so grossed out by the Duluth Trading Company commercials you know the the Luth tra- they have the big billy balls guy that right. comes out and last night i'm watching i forgot what i was watching but it, they've been on a heavy ad schedule lately and it's just like no no itch no stink it's just oh. like you know it's at well have you seen them Ron? i have, have you not seen these? I, I have not seen this. Don't watch I, the same i know do, i know the, the, the i know the commercials you're talking about i know the Once brand this, this this specific underwear I've brought up is, their website is, yeah. is designed to cradle your balls. And they and they they actually specifically say that. And I'm like, okay, look, I like underwear as much as the next guy. I like underwear that's good. I used to buy uh certain underwear. I'm I'm now married to another kind of underwear. Right. I don't like to be I like to be uh, you know, sold underwear, but I don't need all guys out aren't out there smelling like brie cheese oh, and oh. and scratching their gross. anuses. It the commercials okay. are gross. And well, I don't. This is what I know about that company, and this is what I know about why they're successful. The and way I the way I understand balls, it, it's made it, scratch your balls. It's thing. it's yeah. it's performance wear for I would say the larger man. Uh, and and, the, and uh, they gave, they give a vibe that it's also the working guy. I have a yeah, sentence from their website, Mike. I have a sentence from their website from someone who's unfamiliar. This does this not is, pull the, me in. But this is this is what you guys are, are a little bit. Uh, you're larger care. You have larger right. care. Oh, yes, right? thank you, Oscar, for so, saying it kindly. The guys that I know that I've uh, like really saying uh, or praised Duluth, and this is no look, look. I got no dollars from this. All right, so you are aware of people that you know that are customers. Yes, that, that like. Yeah, the, this is the only okay. reason I know about this brand is All that right. these like stop chafing. These stop like these are the your typical prototypical underwear for a, you know a larger man, not even just weight size. They don't make the sizes for uh, for you all. This is performance wear or work wear that will uh, introducing dang soft underwear. Yes, yeah. Dead, 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 I'd dead. like to mention I mean, at just, this point that uh, me undies. Also fits the man of larger carriage. I get and it. It's right. fantastic. This is, but they're not. We're not talking about. Them. And they're I, also I not it. dumbing it down and using phrases on their they website. Got, I like, didn't know they had it. They they only sell their underwear on TV. So I'm not aware they had all this different stuff. And that they have women's stuff. Yeah. That they have. Don't talk they have a they have a brick and mortar store not far oh, from here. Pony. But Mike, how about this? This is a disgusting name of a product. <laughs> Pony has just made a political statement <laughs> regarding <laughs> Duluth Trading Company. What do you, you say? Know, well, he yeah, he's oh you know, yeah, yeah. Pony's yeah, the most liberal. This. Uh, guy among us, and I believe we, so. I don't want to. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, I don't even know the font. Why. When oh, I yeah. see, oh, yeah. when I see it's, these commercials, I feel as though these are wit- these are written by women thinking men all talk like this. Not, yeah. not, the, the, Do you think a woman all, came up with the names, Mike? Buck naked performance. Buck naked beer. No bull beer. Like, what about the, I don't uh, like fake phony tough guy. I don't like. Okay, fake but that, maybe but see, you want some fire hose pants or a no yank tank. You highlighted. <laughs> I agree. I with like you. real tough guys. Okay, real tough guys don't have to is, walk around going, is, "Yeah, no stink pull out of my the my voice? balls have poop on them." It, is <laughs> Isolate it, that, please. Is it the voice or is it the the actual copy? <laughs> it's the campaign. Okay, the campaign. The whole campaign. When I watched this, I said, "Okay, we get it." Right. And you know how I've always felt about tough guys. I've always felt this way. The toughest guys you have out there will give you no indication that they are tough guys. Oh, yeah. Let me give an example. Just like the wealthiest the, people we know. The the cops, the cops, the yep. veterans, mm-hmm. the guys that are true, like if you're if they're going to they're gonna pull you out by your collar yeah. out from the burning building, they're gonna do that. You're not gonna realize it. It's the guys that are 
no, nah, I'm this guy, I'm yeah. this bitch. They're the guys that are going to squeal like a little kitten and they're going to run for their hills. They're going to do it. I've always believed that. Yeah. So when I see a commercial that's just like, hey, man, like that, I just had to get it off my chest. I like don't know these are the people that are wearing like. fire hose workwear, flexpedition pants, souped up sweats, and of course, free swinging flannel. Yeah, free swinging. Yeah. So your big giant super dick can <laughs> oh. can can sway back and forth in your Duluth Trading Company ball shorts. I'm <laughs> sorry. And we've I named the wanting, show. I am so sorry, but I have been wanting to get this off my chest for a very long time. And like everything on this show that I just wanted to give you as a throwaway, we end up talking about it. And I realize it's this psychotherapy. I don't know what this says about Look, it. Naked oh, let me look at the apothecary. Is that like uh, uh, colognes and stuff like that? Is that when they say that? Let me. Yeah, this here we is go. a deeper dive than I've ever taken. The apothecary. Well, no, it's got. They got lots of stuff. They'd be perfect for this show. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, I will change my tune completely if you advertise on the Mike O'Mara show. Come to Luke. Could you think of a nor? Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to talk about it. I heard it's I expensive. They they would be. Uh, it's not cheap. It's, it's I, not that's, I mean, that's what that's the uh, well, it's expensive because everything comes from Minnesota. Sexy, simply great beard oil <laughs> clearance price. So I guess they weren't selling a lot of it. Well, a lot uh, of people are clean shaven now. What's this big ass brick bourbon? All right, I got open. You can't sell bourbon, bourbon on the internet, can you? Let me say, no, it's not booze. Hold on, what is it? Is it a brick? A, it's uh, bar soap. Is big like American, cologne? oh, big American bourbon soap, soap made out of bourbon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm right wearing my bourbon yes, soap and I'm in my balls. Yeah. You don't love it. You wouldn't wear no, that. I, I You're love, a dandy. I love that I that. guessed that it was soap. <laughs> yeah. Soap, yeah. Big bur- Duke Cannon Supply Company. <laughs> Big American bourbon <laughs> soap. I, look, by the way, by the way, let me say this, and I have to. I'm going to qualify. I have no idea. Whether these are, are fabulous products yeah. or not, I am not casting any uh, aspersions no, on the no. product. This is their marketing campaign. I, but I tend it. to use soap to get the smell of bourbon off my body. I've never heard when I come in reeking of it, Mike. I've I've never and I and I don't know enough about the brand, admittedly. But what I've heard about, it, I probably heard about it the first time a couple years ago. Okay. And they had one across the street uh, from in Manassas yeah, in that shopping mall. There's a brick and mortar in Manassas. Yes. Ben's yeah. um, free range cotton boxer breeze. I, I we think, got shaving cream made out of steak. I think we're going to get an <laughs> onslaught of listeners that probably wear Duluth, and they're going to say like they're going to give you the full review, Mike, and you will we'll, we'll take big their big sizes. Word. Yeah, I should probably go there. I'm going to buy some. Size. Can we? Cond- I'd love to. You know what? I if strike this from on the, the Mike O'Mara show. If they advertise, we will strike this from the record. Exactly. No, I am not criticizing the product. If the product's great, I'm fine. You know. Haunted by the ghost of Undies past. Yeah. Can Maybe we, it's just, can we try our under dive into psychologically? Our underarm they, they, roll By on the way, they've got so much good stuff. And stop <laughs> piling on. Stop copying me with this. You're, okay? You make it worse. You're like the guy that when he's on the ground, you're kicking him again in the head, Rob. Well, please, you brought something new to me for that's the love fun. Of God. I apologize. Is I it because it, 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 the, the campaign paints a larger man as uh, un, unkept? Unkempt, stinky. Yep. You know, that type Big, it's got a fat guy. Maybe, I don't know. There's something that tweaked me a little bit. Because you take care just, of yourself. You take a shower every day. I take, I, well, not every day, but I mean, I take a shower most days. Mm-hmm. I do. And, the impression uh, that know. I'm getting, Mike, is what's off-putting and what I'm just reading from you because I've not seen the TV commercial. I've glanced at the website, is that they're installing the image of a false, tough guy, roughneck sort yeah. that is out there wearing these dandy underwear. And but, that's it's just it's not a you, good fit. But if you see the 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 animation of the guy in the, of the commercial he's talking about, right? It's it's not like a guy with abs, right? It's like a heftier dude. What okay, what about could it be like a Sam Elliott type? No. No, okay. No, no. It's a big guy. It's like a big guy. It's a like big guy. You are right, you, have, you it's, animated. It's, it's for me. They have stuff for me. Uh, they should advertise on the Mike O'Mara show after that. <laughs> Thank you. Good sell. Full circle. Full circle. No, I'm looking at him. It's like when I see a certain, uh, you know, number of X's, I, uh, you know, I get, it, I get excited. I truly, truly get excited. All right. Yes. By the way, cross yeah. the threshold. By the way, uh, so we we have uh, the Cocoonville, uh, you know, uh, club team that goes out to other places to yes. play competitive golf. Yeah. And uh, he sent out an email about that he needs your size for a shirt. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, what size are you, Mike? I said, oh, I'm a, you know, 
Right? And that's how I put my hand up. I said, yeah. oh, you know, that's, you. Uh, that's, I just saw an XL out of that. Uh, sure. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, well, yeah, it's a uh, size is bad. When you're a big fat tub of crap, it's, right. it's, it's, it's very, very frustrating. It really is. But I, but this, it just got to me where it's just like, no stink. I don't care if you're a bit. Look, I have been, there's a guy at, at a local retailer who will go nameless here that is in charge of supervising the self-checkout area. Okay. And I walked by him and an odor came from, mm. uh, from hell. Mm. It was like a, an odor that... Uh, you know, uh, in the scene in uh, Amityville Horror where uh, James Brolin walks in where the flies are, and he goes, yes. it was like that odor. And it's just, uh, yeah. so I'm aware that the super large sometimes can't get to nooks and crannies. Yeah, but, I've, uh, but skinny people that. can stink, too. The, no, but think about it. What he's talking. <laughs> no, I, are you, that is not I, my I, size. I texted Mike Thank a private much. text with no. a number and an no, XL. Is, no, that is, no, no. Okay. No, it is not. Higher or lower? Lower. Oh, lower. Thank, Thank goodness. You. Thank you. Very are you this, yeah. Rob? What? I'm going to put that number to just you. It actually depends on the brand. <laughs> <laughs> Your poor heart. <laughs> oh, God. By the way, I got I got all gussied up for the show. You yes. did? Oh, you did? Good for I you. took care of it. Oh, nice. It. Nice. I'm ready to go. Not fun. Oh, what do you mean? Not what do you mean? Not fun. Sad. Dark colors? Well, I made the guy laugh at the men's clothing store when I said, ah, just trying to just trying to make uh, make pudding out of poo. <laughs> and the guy gave me one of these. Ah, 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 ah. Do you think for a minute? He's my buddy. After do you that. think for a what? minute he took you literally that you really just wanted pudding? Uh, no, no. Oh, it was actually happening in his pants. <laughs> wonderful guy. Wonderful, wonderful. Guy. Like, how and, many uh, people at Duluth do you think have bought the soap and accidentally eaten it? Don't you think that if they sent that their products to us? Oh yeah, Bob. Yeah, because we're fat. Yes, that, that would uh, be wonderful. Okay. And Oscars, they're, they're for Oscar too. Yeah. You know, guys that, that I know that guys have used the that said the the one of the greatest attributes of this product. And and again, I don't know. This was brought up organically. This wasn't pre-planned. It wasn't even right. on the show sheet. This is natural. No, that I said, just had to do it. I did, that, one of these days, I, I had that. To, if I you're a man it. of larger carriage, and yes. uh, let's say your, your prototypical underwear that's out there, it doesn't matter who, who what it is, if you just right. buy it off the shelf. Right. Uh, it's never lo- not enough fabric. It's not for long enough, large enough. It, it, when you uh, bend over, there's always crack. Like There's always a situation. This brand- there, are, there are days in 100% humidity. Yep. With my single XL boxer shorts yes. from Hanes that I will be out on the golf course and the waistband of that underwear after 18 holes of golf is mid hamstring for yep. me. Yep. All right. So perhaps. The, this, and there are this, also days. This, this brand's supposed to solve that, Mike. Just one of the attributes. That's all what right. I've heard. I, there are other well, days when I, at the end of the day, when you're disrobing, you say, where has all the fabric gone? You know what? And I have to make it really clear. And I'm not saying this because I think they're going to advertise tomorrow. I'm saying this because, I, you know what? In all seriousness, I think that there are pro- When I looked on the website and I did the deeper dive, I said, wow, to heck with the ad campaign. Let's try this out. So if they're hearing my voice, mm-hmm. send. I don't care. Send the whole thing about, yeah, I'm a big, stinky guy. Yeah, let uh-huh. you free swinging ball, naked buck. Uh, bourbon, bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> send it along. I saw your size chart, and now I'm intrigued. And, uh, find the agency. Intrigued. That's fine. I'm, I'm intrigued. intrigued. <laughs> Mike's intrigued. Yes, sir. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes, sir. Uh, we will take a break, and we will come back with more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara Show. This is your president speaking. The losers at Mike O'Mara's show require your feedback. Needy. They need to be rated by you to validate themselves. Insecure. Example. Tell them that the Yak Shack is an A+. Exaggeration. Give the mailbag five out of five stars. Generous. Assign a 100% to the news you may not need. Lies. TMOS needs a report card. I need to make America great again. Pun. Sad. And now let's round out the promo with some of my best words. Good, strong, taco, sneaky, sweet, thick, crunch, tight, tall, milkshake, China, superior, fish sandwich, and Putin. Hooray for me. I am your king, misguided. Very sad. He sounds surprised with milkshake. He does. <laughs> Interesting. Day. He does. I, uh, 
Uh, welcome back to the Michael Mara Show, brought to you by No Emmy. Uh, shopping for fine jewelry can be overwhelming, especially considering the fact that most fine jewelry retailers mark up prices by five to one, five hundred to one thousand yes. percent. No Emmy believes that luxury jewelry doesn't have to be overpriced. They cut out the middleman and deliver exceptional products without the exorbitant markup. Finally, a customer service company that just happens to sell jewelry. They're all about the customer service. I love their website. Easy to navigate. The prices cannot be beat. No Emmy also offers a lifetime warranty and free shipping and returns on every product, including engravings and custom designs. If you're looking for the finest quality jewelry from a luxury brand you can trust, look no further than No Emmy. Go to hellonoemmy.com slash TMOS to see their collections and get $50 off your first purchase with promo code TMOS. That's an even better deal after spending a fraction of what you'd pay for other luxury brands. Just go to hello, H-E-L-L-O, noemmy, N-O-E-M-I-E dot com slash TMOS. And don't forget to use promo code TMOS for $50 off your first purchase. And we thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, back to the show. Whoa, whoa. Uh, Oscar went to the movies. He went yes. to see The Terminator. And uh, I, I don't know how The Terminator is doing. I don't care about The Terminator. I don't know if it got 10 stars. Oh. I don't know what's happening. But uh, is it popular? Are people going to see <clears> it with the old Linda Hamilton? Uh, I'm happy the, you uh, have no context. This is perfect. All right. Um, on, I think, Monday morning. I don't even know if this was during the show. It might have been pre-show. Mm-hmm. Um, Rob laid on me that, because the entire weekend I was trying to find a space to go see uh, Terminator Dark Fate, and I knew that Monday night was probably going to be my f- best shot. Your sweet spot. Uh, but Rob, unbeknownst uh, to him, laid on me. He said, man, Terminator got decimated at the box office. Like, they didn't do well. It, it didn't Not do as well, well as it was expected. Not blockbuster numbers. Not, I think so they the were... time n- may have passed. Well, Is that true? Time they lost... Passed, it's right? estimated they lost $100 million. Okay. And uh, the movie costs, let's say, around up $200 million to and make. And it was... Wasn't it number one at the box office? It was, Just but low. on a soft yes, box soft office weekend. weekend. All right. And... I heard that. I don't like going to Rotten Tomatoes too much because it just taints every expectation. It does. But it I, does. And sometimes it can really. Yeah. You know, one out of five movies, I would say, conservatively, it can steer you in the wrong direction and you can go. I've gone to Rotten Tomatoes and settled and had an amazing night and go, why did I, why did I look at a review? Everybody's I, done that. Why, we said, why I read reviews? When you can select. So uh, we're wrapping up the evening um, around 6.30. I won't know. It was like 6.45. Uh-huh. And I look at Shannon. She's like, ready? And I'm like, I think I got to stay. And Rofa was staying. And I was like, you know what? It's been a crazy day. Let me see when Dark Fate's on. I look at Rofo and I'm like, hey, man, do you want to go to, do you have time to go to the movies? He goes, that'd be a nice break. And we have done this before. We go down to you the, guys have dated for the years. Georgetown yeah. Cinema. Um, I don't, this is how crazy, that I know my wife hates the movie so much, I've stopped asking her. Movies I, in general? She just, she'd rather go home. I know she doesn't want to go see Terminator Dark My wife Dark would Fate, too. Right? My wife would much rather go home than watch yeah. movies. Yeah. She yeah. doesn't care for so it. I, so I didn't even ask her. I, in front of my wife, I, I say, hey, uh, Rofo, on me, let's do this. And I look to my wife and say, can you drop us off? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so she's become, like a chaperone, like mommy, like mommy. mommy. Yeah. The now text, the dear, movies, text mommy. us when the movie's over. Text I us. said, in my eyes, let's save twelve dollars with an Uber sure. and let's get a ride for my wife. That buys Rob's Rofo, ticket. Uh, does Rofo go to Duluth Trading Company? I'm just he may. Curious, I don't know. That's up to I him. I, him I, he may. Um, and I said, uh, <laughs> and I said, what time do we have? He goes, we got a seven forty-five. And I was like, all right, 6.45, take us 10 minutes to get that. Let's pack it up. Let's pack it up and go. It's weird right. when a movie time actually works. I find when I look at movie times, they always seem to be an hour in the wrong direction. I feel the exact same way. Uh, you know, I The want city the offers you more it. options. Uh, I would say know, where, where, where are those 11.45? <laughs> <stars? laughs> please, please. <laughs> so uh, we jump in the car. Um, my uh, wife and Santos drop us off. Uh, I look to Shannon and I say, sorry, I didn't invite you to movies, but I know you don't want to go just to kind of cover it. And she said, thank you. I didn't want the awkward no, yeah. I don't want to go type of situation. Did she offer right. a mirthless smile? No, no. She okay. said, thanks that, that we avoided that awkwardness. Um, and then we go in and as soon as we walk in, we're at the kiosk. I never check out, usually I pre-buy. So and right. this is the, I'm checking and I was like, oh, there's a seven o'clock right now. It is 7.15, 20 minutes of... Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, you're easy. Easy. yeah I, I'll do that all the time. Yeah, we get out I, at nine thirty instead of ten ten. Like this is yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Um. Absolutely. So I said, let's do this. You carry. He goes, no, I don't care. Let's just get in there. He grabbed mm. the earlier train. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we uh, get in, sit down, and we we sit down. We sit down a seat away from our assigned seats because the theater was bare, but there were a few people next to us. Okay. So if, say if we had sat down eleven and twelve, and I broke my own rule. Rob has a backpack, a coat. He's got a bunch of stuff. He's like uh, uh, going on the Himalayan trail. Um, I have nothing except for just my wallet and my sports coat. All right. So I don't. <laughs> His sit- backpack, like full of buttered popcorn. I sit down. <laughs> I actually asked Rob. He was a great date. I paid for a ticket. I said, "Do you want anything from the snack bar?" He goes, "No, I'm good. I'm good. But- That's nice." Buttered popcorn <clears throat> and human feet. So we sit down. Movie had Chopped just human feet. <laughs> movie had just started and uh, I said uh, I said let's just go sit down in 13 and 14 so as we are not next to the strangers with yeah. uh you know I don't know if they're gonna chat they're gonna talk I just like that buffer and so it's a Wednesday night film no Monday night film Monday night film. Monday ah, night nobody film. nobody in the theater except for these people <clears throat> right. and um I sit down we start uh the movie's great and then I see what looks like um a field trip of people coming towards row e and I said, after oh, the movie's already started? Yes. Which is not annoying, except if you're cheating and you're catching another seat for a backpack yeah, you might and you've be got caught. this buffer. And we are fully reclined. Like, so there's no, this is this type of theater. Are they the electric button yes, seats? Yes, but it's the awkward button seats that aren't easy up and down. They have like touch screens. It's, Was it like a line of people, maybe, coming it, from a facility? <laughs> You know, Rocky Road. They all looked you know. that like they were together, and similarly dressed. Uh, but it was, and, but they looked like they were from some, uh, I would say, uh, an embassy of sorts. Um, Could it possibly Martini be and Billy Babbitt? And, <laughs> yeah, the chief. Could they have possibly <laughs> been from the Washington chapter of the Linda Hamilton fan club? They could have been, mm-hmm. but I knew. I said, like, please don't come to me. Please don't come to me. That this like. If this, is, if, this is, if this is a situation here, I'm gonna be, it's going to be awkward. They come right to our row. They start coming in, and I'm like, and look at Rob, and we know it's go time. We're in the wrong seats. Let's get up right. and get in our seats, because if they have to sit down, we think it's awkward. Right. What row so are you, you in? Describe Rob Ford is going to have to strike his area like a Sherpa guide. Yes. Where he's going to hide, you know, haul everything out of yes. And remember anyway. Rob's motto, <laughs> leave only footprints, take only right. memories. And by the way, if I'm coming in and I've got an assigned seat, not, you know, that, that has an empty seat next to it. Nothing would make me happier than having Rob Ford immediately next to me with yeah. his arm halfway through my seat. Mm-hmm. Well, these and are then, large chairs, Mike. This is a okay. modern theater. That no wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. All right. The seat only, nice and warm. The only problem is, and there are theaters, and I think anybody that's been to a modern theater will understand this, that they recline, but there are theaters that when you recline, there are st- still a walkway in front of you. Yeah. Yep. And then there are theaters when you recline that there is nothing, zero. Okay, nothing is getting through yeah. that. This mm-hmm. theater was the zero one. The zero right. space for feet. You have to recline down for people City to walk theater. by. Precious right. real estate. And because of the awkward buttons, like we, I think Rob and I both hedged our bets. We're like, oh, if we don't move, maybe they'll just sit down to the left. Like we doubled down. Ah. Okay. But you get the stare down. That's option B, which came up and the guys are looking down, looking at us. And we're like, oh my God, we're in their seats. Then this is, this is shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And Rob and I have not talked about this at all yet. Like, this is a moment that I think happens to guys, and you're like, let's just move on with life. Okay. But I will talk about it here because we have this forum. Rob gets up quickly, faster than I do, because I'm fumbling with which, which control panel is mine to get up. Then Rob does what he should. He, gets out, he did everything correct. And my hand is still on the panel to the left of me as Rob is to the left of me. So in order for these gentlemen to, we found out, walk by and not sit in our seats... He sits down on my hand while my hand is on the panel to move. And like I'm talking full sit down, like crack could be. No swing, I mean, no it was stink. a sit down. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trading and, company and, right and, there. And it was this awkward like, ah, uh, my hand's. And it's not homophobic. It's nothing. Was it, your hand trapped underneath his It was buttocks? trapped. Like in that, uh, who's that? What's that movie? 86 Hours or whatever where he has to cut off his oh, arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But Rob, it was oh, Rob. He was Rob. stuck on Mount Ford. <laughs> <laughs> stuck, and because I'm a I'm a fight guy. I'm not a flight. I'm not just gonna cave. Like I'm gonna get out of there. I'm moving my my hand, trying to get out of there and signal to this man. Hey, man, my hands. Well, it sounds like both of you had the intention of moving your seat. Right. Yes, but no intention of this hand and his tuchus. So when your your hand was trapped between 
his crevasse in the chair. Yeah, and I'm you began to move it to indicate you were trapped. No, no, Did he no, turn no. to you and say thank you? <laughs> and by the way, I've got one major question. I'm, no, I do I'm too. moving it for two reasons. One, to get it out, but also to push the button to get my seat down because these guys are standing right in front of it. Right. So I'm did pushing you, uh, this button. Did you, move, did you end up moving? What do you mean? The seats? Did you end up moving your seats? After yeah. this, I would say what felt like a lifetime of awkwardness of him sitting on my hand as the chairs go. Did you smell your hand after? Oh, no. <laughs> no, Mike. <laughs> this is nothing to How do was with the movie? hygiene. How was the movie? Was the movie? Uh, the movie's, it, it is thoroughly, it, it's getting 70% on Rotten Tomatoes I saw afterwards. It is, I think it's underrated. It is the best film of the Terminator franchise out. I would say it's. It's Terminator 1, 2, and then this would land in 3. It could take place, it could take the place of 3 and still be great. So much and how action. many are there? Like 14 of them? Something like I that? Would, I would forget Genesis. I would forget Salvation in my eyes. But if you went to this movie and you like action, yeah. you're, it's going to fly There's by. There's a great like, scene where Arnold sits on Linda Hamilton's hand. <laughs> That's just and then uh, she smells it. That awkward back and forth. <laughs> we'll take a break and we'll come back with more fun on the Michael you're welcome. Mara show, everybody. <laughs> My name is Matthew Ponyboy Bloom, and I approve this message. In this era of fake news, who is our best, most trusted source of entertainment? Clearly not Mike O'Mara. Did you know that Mr. O'Mara voted to defund his interns? He works them for free. Disgusting. Also, the other day, Mike didn't wish Oscar's dog happy birthday. Does Mr. O'Mara believe dogs don't deserve love on their birthdays? I think so. Heartless, avid golfer, Floridian. Just a few words to describe the monster behind the mic. Let Pony, a proven patriot, lead your mornings right. Sign up for the bonus show to give Pony the spotlight he rightfully deserves. This grassroots movement needs your support. Together, we can dethrone the host with the most medical problems. This ad was paid in part by the OFIC, Organization for Intercompensation. Compensation. I'm still Matthew Thank Bloom, you. and I still approve this message. Thank you very much. Thank you, boys. <laughs> uh, man, I'm drinking it right now. Yes. I drink it every morning. This is my morning That's ritual. your show cup. This is Liquid IV. It's Love in it. my special uh, cup with a pineapple on it. It's, uh, uh, you know, uh, the vessel is not that great, but what's in it is fantastic. It's Liquid IV, the fastest, most efficient way to stay hydrated, and I love it. I love the lemon lime. Yes. Keeps, keeps my mouth so nice and hydrated. Don't you get tired of water, just plain water? I do. I, I hate it. I, uh, I just add a packet to my water, and I'm good to go, and uh, it's fantastic. It hydrates you two to three times faster and more efficiently than water. It's got tons of vitamins. Liquid IV rocks. Fastest growing wellness brand. You can find it everywhere, especially on the Mike O'Mara website, even Costco. It's a healthy alternative to traditional sugary sports drinks. It's got a balance and a flavor that I love, non-GMO, vegan, free of gluten, dairy, and soy. Love the fact that we've got a long-term relationship with them. Mm. I hope it goes forever because I love this product and I use it, and we have lots of relationships like that. Uh, you know, soon to come, maybe the Duluth Trading, Trading Company will sell it on Yes. There. Liquid IV. No. Uh, I love Liquid IV. I know you will, too. Right now, our listeners get 25% off at liquidiv.com when you use our code TMOS at checkout. That's 25% off anything you order on the Liquid IV website. Go to liquidiv.com, enter the promo code TMOS to get your savings and start getting better hydration. That's liquidiv.com, promo code TMOS. Don't wait. Start properly hydrating today. I got it jammed into my golf cart. Just really? loads of packets of liquid IV. Awesome, Mike. Uh, we're getting uh, we're getting peppered by s- listeners now on uh, our, our fan fan club site. Direct message. Uh, yes. Love my Duluth six three two ninety. Uh, most comfortable guy wear outside, and they have more. They offer more than construction guy wear. They say like they're, they're, com- they're coming in. They're coming yes. in. Find coming out their in. agency. I'm gonna look, Get them I'm on the look air. it up. Look it up. Get mm-hmm. them on the air. Let's do it. Let's do our. Let's make our own fun. That are, is a fit. Are you six three two ninety ish? Yeah, about. Okay. Neighborhood. Curious. Maybe a little shorter. Like if you're 40 pounds shorter of that, you know. <laughs> Mike, I said neighborhood. It's not a Waze address. <laughs> it's a neighborhood. If you're talking about, you're talking about county or city. Are we in a zip code or oh, are we in an area zip. code? It's a, uh, it's a, it's a five digit zip code, not a nine digit zip code. <laughs> No, I, uh, this is, you know, I, I went to a little men's store yesterday and got, uh, you know, got, a, got some school clothes and I realized Hard shoes. That I just don't do it. Uh, didn't get shoes. Okay. No, I've got, uh, you know, I mean, uh, one has to cut back at some point. Sure. Uh, but yeah, it was, uh, so I'm, I'm very much aware of sizes and stuff like that. And, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just not fun. 
It is. It would be fun, uh, but you know, I I have the choice of what to put in my mouth, and I make that uh, decision every Your day. Your intake I do. It sucks. It sucks. I, it's it's a terrible, terrible thing. I would think. Here's the myth. Let me tell you my greatest physical fitness myth. Okay, is that out there doing what I do is in any way related to exercise? It is not. It is not. My legs are stronger. That's it. My legs are stronger. I feel better every day. That's it. As far as real fitness, if you got me, you know, you said, hey, Mike, the, uh, you know, the, the Oreos are at uh, on floor four. Run up and get them. I did. Mm. Mm. Because it just doesn't but work the, the same beauty way. Is if that I walked, was, if was... I walked the golf course, I do, by the way, when I'm riding along in a cart, I do well over 10,000 steps between walking to the different parts. This... still doesn't matter. Mm. Walking those 10,000 steps and really just walking, walking, walking. I just don't think it uh, – I found this out when I went up to Maine with, yeah. with hills. Florida is flat, and I walk flat, and I walk from point A to point B with resting in between. If you really want to get the fit, <laughs> you walk or run long distances, and that puts you into a, a different zone. I'm aware of that. So you throw that in with the uh, fact that uh, they just added trail mix to the Cocoonville snack platter, and uh, you know, I'm like, <laughs> what is the, What is the snack platter? One of the guys looks across at me. It's not a snack platter. They put out like popcorn or oh, little, uh, I see. you know, salty Munchies. snacks. Mm. And I said, "Do you have salty snacks?" And uh, and the guy says to me, "You want the ones with the uh, the uh, raisins and the M and M's?" I said, "That would be trail mix." Yes, I would. And I put it down. And a guy sitting across my, in fact, one of my partners that I play with in a tournament from huh? Rochester, New York, Buffalo, New York. And he looks at me and goes, "Jesus Christ, did you eat all that?" I'm like. <laughs> 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 And then Carla came home like two nights ago. Did you eat the chocolate covered pretzels? And I go, bip, bip, bip. <laughs> yeah, really? You want to? You know, you want me to lose weight? Put me in a box. You know, uh, you know. What's that movie? Room? Yes. Wasn't that a movie? Yes. Room where yeah. the guy had like the dumpster or something that he kept the uh, the lady and got her pregnant and she had a kid. <laughs> Put me in that room. Deprivation, just like because otherwise, it's like, did you eat that? Bip, 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 like that. Are you Terrible. open to Sorry. a pregnancy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that you're self-aware. Uh, I'm totally self-aware. Because sure. a lot of people are in denial. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's very much. I'll tell you one thing I think. This is where I lack self-awareness. I don't think as many people give a rat's ass about it as I do. But And I think fat people are much more aware of fat people. Oh, 100%. I think fat people look at, look at fat people and, and, and do that. You yeah. Know? And, uh, but, I never thought about yeah, that. It, the self-awareness is I. It, that's... It, the myth is gone of me coming down here and lose weight. What I do is I lose weight when I'm out there doing what I do, mm -hmm. and then I'm not. It's all what you're putting in your mouth. Mm -hmm. That is the key to the kingdom, and I'm here to say I look forward to seeing you all in Las Vegas when they tie the strings to my ankles and I float in like uh, celebrating the week before the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and the handlers bring me in with you know, it's going to be very it's going to be very very exciting. All the P ones grab I, a rope. Yes. <laughs> Just preparing my audience because my self awareness and my insecurity dictates that I prepare my audience for this. Thank you very uh, much, Mike. I think that it's infinitely harder as uh, you get older. It to, is. So when it happens, it's like yep. it's got to be a life change. I got to tell you. I have to ask you this yes. because uh, with the humidity we've had, and they are talking about the record month. Shocker. Shocker climate deniers. Of yes. course. Uh, Florida, even Florida, record heat in the month of October. Hotter than it's ever been for longer than it's ever been. Yay. They have people bitching about it. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> you know, if there's a, look, it's an insurance policy. If there's something we could do that maybe can change it, maybe we try to change it. Try it. Or maybe we just go duh, 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 and we don't do a goddamn thing. That's it. That's my simple philosophy in a nutshell right there. If you can do something. And maybe change things. Do it. Why not give it away? Yeah. No, no, it's not right. Yeah, yeah. Burr, 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 we're so stupid. We're so stupid. And by the way, we're all going to be dead. People my age are all going to be dead if it's really true. The doomsayers, what mm -hmm. they say, you know, where you're going to be sitting there like uh, in Disney water World levels. going, I don't understand yeah. why this is waterfront property right now. Okay? I, look, they could be wrong. But if they're not, then you're all screwed. And That's then maybe right. you say, maybe if we had done something... That's as simple. It's just like buying insurance. Yep. That's what I say. But nobody seems to want to care because it's not right in front of our kissers. So that's the way I look at it. It's been hot, 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 Dom. 
and we're going to be dead, <laughs> dead, dead. dead. <laughs> yeah. So, do they have any? Do they have any uh, break in your weather in the in the near future, or is it just going to keep yeah. you in? A, okay, it's I freezing three, up here. Three, four days. I think we're getting the break. It's Good. been. This second wave of the humidity has just been a little a drag. I've been dragging my ass around. I bet. Taking my kid to the bus stop, going sucks. out, walking around. It sucks. Question. Yes. Do you two, either one of you, do you believe in vitamins? Do you believe in vitamin supplements? Is oh, it BS God. or is it true? No, I take. Because I'm back on the vitamins, and I feel today like, I don't know whether it's 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 a placebo effect I feel as though I've got a little extra spring Place bow. this morning. I just take a multivitamin and some extra vitamin E, and that's it. And you know what? I do. You it's, believe in it? Yeah. Do you I believe like if you didn't take it, you would be dragging? I believe that it it fills in the holes. I think your body can only absorb so much of certain things. So I think you take it as a suppository. No, <laughs> only if I want to treat myself. <laughs> so I'm just on Saturdays. Yeah, just on Saturdays. Uh, no, for my birthday. I think Here's that, your horse pill, Mister <laughs> Speedway. <laughs> oh God, it burns. Gross. <laughs> My oh, so you do? I you do. Believe. I take a vit- I take a multivitamin and a vitamin E, and I feel that yeah, I think it fills in the blanks of stuff you're do not you getting. Take vitamins, Oscar. So I there's there's something about not FDA approved that bothers me. Something I, about a suppository joke that it, looks, well, makes me it's difficult to continue. Did with you take your vitamins? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, a probiotic is that considered a vitamin? It's a supplement. Uh, supplement. I take a probiotic every day. I do uh, so not I take consider that, a probiotic uh, a vitamin. Okay, so the, I take that uh, for gut health. And what's really changed uh, my energy level and my overall, I would say, health is the is it vitamin D for – that's what I'm deficient in. Yeah, because of sunlight. Yeah, because we're in studios all the time without okay. any sun. Mm-hmm. All right. So you that, believe in them. That – and I thought my doctor was full of – I was like, I don't need oh. that. This is – I get enough sun. When they dosed me up on that – I felt much better. Uh, I am now back to taking a multi. I take mm-hmm. a multi. I take a thing called uh, glucosamine uh, chondroitin, which is called yep. a triple flex, which is for joint flexibility. I take a magnesium, and I have no idea why I do. And then I take uh, 11 or 12 uh, Viagras every <laughs> every day. That's, uh, that's now, Oscar, just works. before yes. you ask, Adderall, not a vitamin. No, no. Okay. No. No, that's, uh, what is it? Ambien, uh, not, <laughs> not a vitamin. Oh, I not a vitamin. for some Ambien. Please. Yeah. I, might, uh, I, might, I might try that on the plane. Uh, anyway, you know. You have Ambien? The, you know, and then I land like at 10 nice. o'clock in uh, Las Vegas going, where's the Skeena Hotel be? <laughs> Let's all, before the show, take a <laughs> take an Ambien and a beer. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> uh, we'll take a break. Come back with news you may not need right here on the Mike O'Mara Show, everyone. Hi. Hey, I'm Ryan Garten. My favorite podcast, The Mike O'Mara Show, is incredibly funny. But sometimes when I want to listen, my hands are full. Literally. It's not easy to download a podcast with a fistful of roasted eggplant spread covered with a reduced garlic aioli. Or if you're 10 little piggies or cradling a standing rib roast with a crispy Gruyere Yorkshire pudding. That's why when I'm in the Barefoot Contessa kitchens, I rely on Alexa. How easy is that? All I have to say is, hey, Alexa. Play the Mike O'Mara show, and the most recent episode plays right away. How easy is that? Even Jeffrey can do it, and I actually really hate him. In fact, we really hate each other. It's like being married to a hobbit. How tragic is that? TMOS and Alexa, they go together like little thin slices of salami and caper berry. Now back to my custard. Thanks, Anna. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. I know. Uh, brought to you by Zappos. Uh, we're very excited to be going out to Las Vegas. We're going to be at a theater called the Council Chambers Theater that is uh, part of Zappos uh, Corporate Headquarters. Beautiful. Wonderful company. Celebrating our 10th anniversary with them. They're celebrating their 20th birthday. They've been around a long time. Uh, thanks to over 1,000 trusted brand names, Zappos.com is able to help millions of customers create a long-lasting wardrobe that they love. We love the corporate culture at Zappos because they're so customer friendly. Yes. They're so people friendly. They're so modern that way. We're uh, excited to continue the relationship and we celebrate it with our return to Vegas for our 10th anniversary. Yay for us. Yay. 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 Uh, hosted by our friends at Zappos. Our partnership is built on listener support. So whether it's footwear, outerwear, anywhere, basically if you wear it, Get it at Zappos. Mm-hmm. We just ask uh, that you support us both by accessing Zappos through our website. Just click the banner. By the way, every time you access Zappos through our corporate uh, our corporate partner through the website, Oscar gets his wings. That's yes. right. Every mm-hmm. single time. And they're Thank extra you. crispy. Zappos. <laughs> Thank you. Zappos.com. 
Never been a better time to look your best. Thank you, Zappo. See you in Vegas. Nine days, bitches. News. News. There's a big celebrity auction. I know you love these, Rob. These yeah, celebrity uh, I do. auctions uh, going on uh, live on eBay tomorrow to benefit Homes for Our Troops, uh, a charity that uh, builds homes for our troops. Just got to meet a guy uh, that had a home built for him down here in uh, West South Florida, and uh, I love that. I mean, that's what an awesome. Incredible way to get a guy mm-hmm. on his feet and get him back in the society and doing that. Uh, items up for bids will include an Omega watch from George Clooney's personal collection. That's pretty cool. cool. Uh, lunch with Brian Cranston, another good thing. Uh, or lunch with uh, NBA legend uh, Dominique Wilkins. Uh, guitars autographed by Willie Nelson and Bon Jovi. Medical scrubs autographed by the case, uh, the cast of Grey's Anatomy. Mm. Uh, the spacesuit Ryan Reynolds wore in Life. That's a uh, oh wow. What movie was that Life? I don't know, but spacesuits are cool and expensive. I know from experience. <laughs> Here's a cool thing: a walk-on part in Ben Stiller's new TV project. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Set visits to uh, Judd Apatow's uh, next movie, or the, uh, or a set visit to the HBO series Succession. Oh, oh. Man, on a yacht. Uh, a, visit. Uh, a meet and greet with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, Carla's fave, absolute really? favorite. Uh, along with tickets to see him in Sunday in the Park with George in London and VIP tickets to the premiere of Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, don't worry, 100% of the proceeds go to Homes for Our Troops. So uh, if you want to bid on any the of watch stuff, is cool, but you know what? Maybe. I think lunch with Brian Cranston would be fantastic. Wouldn't you if love to talk to him? Check. Yeah. If he pitched it to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know what I couldn't resist doing, though? It's just like, I'd like to see the appetizers, bitch. <laughs> Shrimp, Mr. Breaking, White. Breaking bad with me. <laughs> ABC got such a good buzz recreating episodes of All in the Family and the Jeffersons that they're doing it again, only this time they're pairing All in the Family with Good Times. Uh, this oh. second installment of Live in Front of a Studio Audience will air on Wednesday, December 18th. Carrie Washington, who played Helen Willis on The Jeffersons the first time around, is one of the producers on this one. There's no word on casting yet, so it's not even clear if Woody Harrelson and Marissa Tomei will be back to play Archie and Edith Bunker. You're a TV guy. Did you watch that one? I it came did, out? and I found it a curio. And here's what the thing is, is that... All in the Family, you'll agree with me, was a real touchstone thing. It was a big deal. It set a oh, lot sure of was. set Massive a lot of marks. Thing. But yep. it, what this did to me is it pigeonholed it as a period piece, and that was sad because it yeah. was it was more when you make something that's historical retro, you right. take the you take the power out of what it. What do you mean? I totally it agree was, with that. It was it like diminished it because it, All in the Family was so important in its day, in its place changing the way people thought and talked and really pointing okay, at racism. It, it. When you do it now, it's kind of cute, yeah. but it doesn't have the weight. And got it, it got pointed it. out the Makes racism sense. in our society by creating a lovable character who was a bigot. That was so the flawed. The lovable so bigot, flawed. Archie wow. Bunker. Yeah. And if you ever get a chance, go back and look at that. You want to talk about cutting edge. Oh, my God. Where they dealt with it head on. Yep. We were much more woke when it came to racial issues in America back in those days. All credit when to Nor- we dealt with Norman it Lear, on. man. Norman Lear Norman didn't Lear shy with his from balls, anything. With his wow. giant balls, we yep. created all in the family. And he would say, Archie would say, horrible thing. He was a giant bigot. Yep. And, but they made it hysterical and really you can look back on that and I've always felt this way about our all in the family you go back and we were laughing at it but we we didn't realize just how you know no they were picking they were picking a lot of scabs they really were they really and, were yeah and it's it, it was a great example of showing people's frailties through comedy and yep. it was so well written the relationship his son-in-law was very liberal and they could go butt head to head on real Rob issues Reiner but make it so his, uh, funny Mike yeah, yeah. Like, Mike what, er- was what era was this i mean 70s, 70s okay television. didn't it premiere like 70 i think 1970 is yeah. when it premiered way way yeah. way back and uh, uh, it's when tv was you know kind of a golden age of television when you yeah. had that mm-hmm. mary tyler moore show check it out a lot of shows like but that like i said it's kid. cute but i think it sort of diminishes the original what i remember about it was the opening because they would they had every rerun so that's what I, yeah, I, they, I do have some context, but it was the song, right? Oh, the way Glenn yeah. Miller played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Somebody's, I think, due to make a, I think, a show uh, like that, but make it with the modern person that maybe covers it up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They, they've had shows like that. Who knows? There's so much out there. It's hard to say. Uh, Emma Watson, if you care about her, she'll be 30 next April. Jesus, and, uh, really? She's beautiful. She says, if you uh, have not built a home, if you do not have a husband, if you do not have a baby, 
and you're turning 30 and you're not in some incredibly secure, stable place in your career, or if you're still figuring things out, there's just this incredible amount of anxiety. I can, I guess there is. She Emma, feels that. Yeah. Emma does not think there's anything wrong with her. Not anymore. And she even has a, a fancy, uh, a fancy Gwyneth Paltrow-esque expression to describe her situation. She says, quote, it took me a long time, but I'm very happy being single. I call it being self-partnered. She's only 30. Yeah. Okay, she doesn't have to, you yeah. know what, Emma, life's not over. You don't have to worry about labeling yourself or because you're 30. is it the opposite, and I know that she's still uh, in movies and still acting, but is it the opposite that she had such success when she was younger mm-hmm. that, right. that can never be eclipsed, like, that will never be eclipsed? Yeah, I don't know, but she's talking an awful lot about it. But, uh, you know, when I look at that, Emma, you're half my age. <laughs> no need to <laughs> get, get it together. Exactly. Pony, call uh, her. 65% oh, of people it. in a recent survey said that if they forgot someone's name, they just avoid using it. Hello. Yes. Uh, only 25% would ask them to repeat it. So how do you prevent forgetting the uh, first names in the first place? Six tricks. Here we go. Oh, cool. Pay attention to this. Focus. Step one. That's it. Focus. Don't let your anxiety and your, uh, you know, people in the room or something around you distract you, including, uh, you know, the moment you won't forget so easily. So you don't let yourself get distracted. You don't even let the tension of the moment let you get distracted, and you won't forget so easily. Focus on the name. Okay. Step two, repeat their name back to them immediately. I've heard this. Saying, saying something like, nice to meet you, Tom, really helps your brain process it. Step three, associate it with something meaningful to you, like uh, that you have a Tomcat or that your favorite actor is Tom Hanks. Step four, form a mental image between the person and your association. Like if their name is Victoria, it reminds you of a Queen Victoria. Picture them wearing a crown. The sillier, the better, because silly things are more memorable. Step five, connect their appearance to their name. Like Mary, uh, maybe Victoria is wearing a V-neck sweater. That V alone might help you remember later on. Step six, Keep repeating their name. Say it again in conversation a few minutes later. That's obnoxious. It is, I, and I, mean, I, I and I've I mean, felt that when people have done that, I know that they're doing it because it's right. obvious. Uh, are, have you gotten better think, or worse think, at names? I think people can do the, do it in a nice, tasteful way. That, yeah, but that, some people are not good at yeah, it. Yeah, if you're not uh, if you're not overt, right? But I've Mike. Seen, it's great to meet you, Mike. All right, Mike. Mike, do you live over here, Mike? Do you have that? Mess? Shut up! Shut up! What's uh, your name? Every day, Mike. What? When I come in here, I I, I have to think. Oh. I say. What's that thing he's talking into? Oh, a mic. <laughs> Hi, Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible read, with names. Uh, I am too. I think that's the nature of the business. We've been raised in a business where we don't have to worry about it. And I think that's what it is. But I'd love to get better. I've yeah, always wanted to get, to get better. There was a guy on my floor in college for two years. I didn't know his name my entire freshman year, so I just called him friend. And that became his name to everybody. They just called friend. him friend because I can Hello, never friend. remember his yeah. name. How you doing, friend? Good Hello, to see friend. you, friend. Hello. Nice to see you, friend. friend. Uh, I don't do these very often because there's some every day, but Pringles. Oh, oh nice. sorry. They just announced they're selling turducken chips this year. Uh, if you don't know what a turducken is, well, you shouldn't be listening to this. That's show. right. Go away. There. I said it. Uh, Pringles has created turkey, duck, and chicken flavored chips. And when you stack them on top of each other, you get a turducken. So they're stackable. So okay. You get a separate well, taste. once you pop, you can't stop. <laughs> I'm intrigued. I, I'm a rube, I know, but I'm intrigued. I try them. I try. That's why I, I put just, it in here. I just want to taste the duck chip. Uh, <laughs> the chips are all part of their Friendsgiving feast, oh. turducken kit, which also comes with chips that taste like cranberry sauce, mm. stuffing, and pumpkin pie. So is this a this is for friends the show friends because they always did the Thanksgiving episodes didn't they have a turducken episode I I, I don't know, recall that I, mean, I think yeah. you're right I think you're right it's I your favorite right. show I think you're right I think you're absolutely right friends giving well if you're curious the kit costs sixteen dollars that's too plus much five dollars for shipping yeah. I might get that there you go. I might get that. Get hey. right next to every pair of Duluth Trading Company boxers comes with a. We should duck. try that. Buy our new oh, duck yeah. flavored deodorant. And uh, now a little something, something. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. There is a 32 year old guy named Bryce Williams. Ah. He's from Denham Springs, Louisiana, and he was arrested Sunday around midnight after he showed up at a bar on an electric shopping cart from Walmart. <laughs> when the cops confronted him, he admitted he'd stolen the shopping cart from the Walmart about a half mile away. Why? Well, why do you think? 
He was drunk. Of course, mm. Oscar. Ha -ha. And he was afraid he'd get a DUI if he drove his own car. So he figured it would be a better idea to steal the cart and drive that. Uh, well, it wasn't. He was charged with unauthorized use of a movable. <laughs> they call it movable. Uh, by the way, Walmart carts now available at Jimmy's Old Town Tavern, where everybody is treated like uh, an infirmed customer. Thank you very much. There you go. That's a, uh, hey, I got Walmart cards. Come I on in. I can see a charging station right outside of the right. Buffalo Wing. Yeah, that would be fun, you know? We get accused of making fun of people that are uh, disabled. I no, love Mike, we'd uh, be honoring them. Yeah. Don't, don't you think that's access, fun to have Mike? A, uh, yeah. Have a rascal scooter basketball game or something yes, like that? Yeah. You know? Ooh, I'm there. Anyway, no, we'd get in trouble. Have you no, ever, no, have you ever if, if it was like for charity, Mike, we'd be okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is true. It'd be a special charity. Yes, sir. Uh, have you ever used a motorized wheelchair just for fun? Uh, no, I never had. Uh, They're more the fun than the scooters. More I speed. used a rascal. I used a rascal scooter though. <laughs> yeah, not no, a motorized yeah. wheelchair, but I used a rascal when I had my hip surgery. Oh, that was a big. That was big fun. I yeah, didn't know that. Somehow. Nobody gave me a second look. I looked normal. I used one. Yeah, I used one. Not comfortable. Uh, we'll take a break and come back with the audio ball right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. What's your name? F you. That's my name. A B C. A always, B, B, C, call in the X shack. A, I, D, A, add interest drunk asshats. Call 888-920-MORE. That's 888-920-6673. you, that's my name. <laughs> I love that one. It's a good one. Sweet. It's a goodie. Uh, this portion of the program brought to you by our bonus packages. You sat in line for three hours just to get a stupid Popeye's chicken sandwich. You blocked traffic on Route 7 because the drive through was jam-packed and mind-numbingly slow. Then you get to the window, and you don't even have enough money to pay. Denied. Loser. <laughs> yep. All that waiting, and uh, all you had was uh, $1.99. Sad. So now what? Well, wise up, chump. That's enough dough to buy the TMOS bonus show. Uh -huh. And after one episode, you'll be all in, baby. The bonus show is served on a brioche bun and comes in your choice of mild or spicy and features Mike, Oscar, Rob, Maddie, and Stan Musil. Musil. I mean, Pony. It's a commercial-free, no-holes-barred sixth episode. You're going to love it. You are going to love it. The TMOS bonus show brought to you by Penguin Feather Record and Tapes. If you want the D.C. area's best selection of both popular music and drug paraphernalia, think about visiting the Feather. <laughs> but just think about it. Don't actually go because customs agents raided it in 1989, got all six locations shut down one year later. I guess they should have sold more songs and less bombs. <laughs> Penguin Feather. It's now a true religion gene store. Thank you. And now let's open up the audio vault. Hey, Ever been to the feather, feather Mike? Never been day? to the feather in my entire life. Never the feather is now in the Vienna Feather is now an Anita's New Mexico style oh, restaurant. Look at that. But Ooh. I do remember going there, I believe, with my Aunt Gail to buy a record and saying, What are those lamps? Wow. <laughs> Glass <laughs> bongs. Did you say Anita's is a New Mexico style restaurant? That's that's restaurant? what and the, the original Anita's in Vienna, Virginia is Anita's New Mexico style restaurant. That's what they like New Mexico the state? I believe so. I believe that was their marketing ploy. Great food, Anita's though. Anita's was Mexican I, So it's food. like, yeah, it's but I think it's, I think it's a style okay. more than anything. But uh, they could have changed, but I just remember the original sign. I'd love to know that, though. I, I mean, somehow that's sticking Tony, in Google my that, please. Yeah. Thank or did it just say new because it was a new open? Like yeah, or is it Anita's like new, new Mexican comma. restaurant? Yeah, new comma. I don't think there was a comma. The comma was extra. <laughs> Mike, they we'll did. Know. We'll <laughs> let you know. Find out now. This is that's horrifying. Do you have a virtual assistant? Do you have a Google Home or an Amazon Alexa? Both. They have revealed now that they can be hacked using a laser from outside of your home. This would be a good tech 411, yeah, because this is, this is crazy. This is horrifying. Inside each microphone, there is a small plate called the diaphragm. When sound hits the diaphragm, it moves, resulting in electrical signals. Instead of sound, an attacker can encode commands via the intensity of a laser light beam. By shining a laser light through the window at the microphone, an attacker can remotely cause the diaphragm to move. This results in electrical signals representing the attacker's commands. The attacker can control smart home switches, make online purchases, open smart garage doors, remotely unlock and start certain vehicles, or open smart locks by brute forcing the user's PIN number. Pretty fun. 
Uh, I, I how do they get into the house though? Well, through no, a window. They can do it through a window. So the length of uh, the, what I saw was like the length of a football field. The laser was coming through the window, and then picked up that little diaphragm and then commanded, took over the, act, the actual speaker. Uh, what I thought was fascinating is that um, it took so long for someone to actually hack this, figure it out, yeah, and then. The idea of, hey, make sure your a smart device, your smart speaker isn't anywhere near a window. And I thought about where everything is. Like you, that's usually a shelf or something's close to of that course. area. Yeah, right. And I felt right. like, there's, and I'm not sure if it's out there, but I'm waiting for the YouTube videos of boxes over their Alexa. Yeah, <laughs> mirrored <know>. boxes. <laughs> mirrored boy, boxes. Oh, boy. That is just amazing. There are people that, isn't it stunning when you do think that there are people that are figuring this crap out mm -hmm. for illicit purposes? Every and we still, and they and they run our audio stream and we right. and, and what confuses <laughs> us and what confuses I bet he's got ten lasers of in his course house. he does oh, to his he house. just opened Mike's garage we don't know <laughs> uh, what new uh, Mexico or is it New Mexico it is indeed New Mexico style wow Mexico. Southwest that's cool yeah that is really neat. I like that all right Mike uh, I, I we run a little late but I want to get two more tapes in because they are time sensitive uh, okay. today we celebrate a man named Adolf. Mm. It was Adolf uh -oh. Sax who uh -oh. invented, it's his birthday, he invented the saxophone. And okay. here's a little game for you. I'm going to play you 10 songs that have notable sax solos, and as they play, see if you can call them out as they play. These are right. great saxophone songs in top 40 history. Oh, I know. You, uh, <laughs> can I keep up? Whisper? Yes. Oh, never mind. I can't, they're too fast. Yeah, why are you doing this to us? Well, it's how fun. are we supposed Unfair. to play? It's how fun. are we supposed to play the game when you're playing them like that? It's fun. You yell them out as they come. I'll start but from the beginning. Be, there's not even time to yell fun. them out. There's Piss plenty of time. Off. Well, that's part of the fun too. You try it again. Just okay. yell them out as you know them. Lady in red. Careless <laughs> whisper. That's right. Lady in red. Who could it be now? Perfect. Uh, Lady in red. Dark side. Yes. Smooth operator. No. <laughs> Old time rock and roll. Perfect. Uh, you're the cat. No, I don't know. Oh, screw it. Lady right, Red. Right, right, right. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Stop. Stop. God damn it. Mike, you, were, you were doing great. The only one you missed was Young Americans, the David Bowie song. Young Americans, David Bowie. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. The well, last one. And let's close with this. I love this, and it's great because Oscar brought up the movie. They really want the new Terminator movie to work. So they did a commercial for the Los Angeles Clippers. They have a player named Kawhi Leonard. Can I stop you for just a second here? Yeah. Uh, you said they were time sensitive, your sounds. No, you just really wanted to play that game, didn't you? You just really Well, did. no, no. but today is National Saxophone Day because it's Adolf oh. Sax's birthday. All right, yeah. you're right. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. All right. uh, so Kawhi Leonard did a commercial for the Los Angeles Clippers. They call him the Terminator because of the way he plays. And he did a commercial with Arnold and Linda Hamilton. And I like it. Anytime Arnold gets to act, I thought you'd appreciate this. So we All close right. with a commercial with Arnold and his new failing movie. Hey, Kawhi. It's great to have you here. Plus, it's good to see another Terminator. I don't know why they call me that. Because you have zero emotions. You feel no pain. You have no mercy. Trust me, it's a compliment, okay? Somebody call Sarah Connor. Well, isn't this cute? A Terminator convention. He's the real Terminator. Yeah, well, you're the one with the crazy robot laugh. Ha, 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 ha. It's a totally normal laugh. He's a fun guy. <laughs> Good thing. Otherwise, I'd have to terminate you. Ha ha ha. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> what it do, baby? <laughs> <laughs> know this, Mike. If you go see the new Terminator movie, the acting is not quite that good. The movie's but good. almost. <laughs> <laughs> almost. That's your magic audio <laughs> vault. Have a good Wednesday, everybody. Can't imagine why that one, that movie's just not mm. doing as well. I am Linda Hamilton. <laughs> Where's my broom? <laughs> I'm Sarah Connor. <laughs> Can we play a game? Uh, anyway, uh, that's it. we got to get out of here. Uh, buy all the stuff we want you to buy. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we, ten, nine days, right? Nine, nine days? Nine, nine days. Nine, yes. nine days. Nine days to lost wages. We're looking forward to going to Vegas. We'll see you next time uh, on the Mike O'Mara Show. For Oscar Santana and Rob Spiewak, Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Take a vitamin. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Before you go, please make a mental note. Today's show was made possible by the TMOS bonus packages. You can secure yours right now by going to MikeOmeraShow.com and clicking on the red bonus banner. Buy it or give it. Either way, you're helping out TMOS, and that's a good thing. Thank you, and go in peace. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. I'm afraid we have a bad image, sir. Market research shows people see you as something of an ogre. Uh, you're
might club them and eat their bones. If you want to throw down in fisticuffs, fine. I've got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary waiting for you. Right here. Come on, Charlie. Let's get out of here. I'm going to eat with him. It's the last thing I ever do. So I go to once a gobstopper and he'll get one. Bow to your sensei. Bow to your sensei!